try to take a uh, standpoint, try to take advantage from this way of uh, thinking. And I try, I try to show you how we can uh, even uh, consider this, this kind of, of a new set theory, give up another approach to the system set theory, and then, as I call it, an expansion of mathematical thinking. So let me remind you that Paul Carlos, who was a contemporary of Vasilev, said something very, which for me is very interesting and maybe it reflects the spirit of the time. Uh, something like, if there is a geometry of a curvature space, why not a curved logic? Referring to the curved space of general relativity. But the big problem is, it's a very nice analogy, as, as, as Vasilev himself proposed, to go from geometry to logic and to think about the curve of logic. Why not? Of course, there's no any uh, philosophical or rational objection against that. But the big problem is how we could think about a way of uh, making everything coherent. Well, we know that a uh, curve in space is coherent because we have models. We have human models, logic models, and so on. But how can we have the same thing for logic? It seems that to find a, a models for logic is something a bit more complex. Not, not, not more difficult maybe, but of different nature. Then finding a models for, for geometry. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that we can, so the purpose of my talk is to, to, to show that we can start from a new point uh, taking the notion of the consistency as something uh, very primitive. Then we, we would answer the question, how, be, how can this, this curvy logic be uh, coherent? <coughs> it's going to be coherent if you will, for, for instance, you want to approach it, if we start from a fresh uh, approach to consistency, take the notion of consistency as something primitive as primitive as the notion of points and lines. Now, I don't have to convince you that contradictions can help reason. So this, this conference here is not a conference where I should have to convince you that contradictions are uh, something that can be useful for our thought and not anything that we can, we can destroy our thought. So, I always I like to give this kind of example that financial authorities are have to find a contradiction in your earning and your lifestyle. Only if they find a contradiction, they can call you there and ask you for your profits. And if you are making the good declarations of it or not. And police investigations as well. In a certain sense, investigations survive the old contradictions. If there is no contradiction, if everybody lies the same way, they cannot find, I mean, the culprit. They cannot find the people to be blamed. So in a certain sense, contradictions provoke this kind of belief revision. And this belief revision is something very important, as you may know. Nowadays, even in computer science, in other areas of, uh, of thinking. Uh, well, I go very briefly to this, this slide here. In this slide, I would like to convince you that there is a distinction between uh, reasoning performed by societies and reasoning as performed by individuals. And this is something which is more or less implicit in the work of Vasilev. In the sense that statements, I mean a society, a group of people may produce different statements about the same reality, which does not mean that the reality itself is contradictory. So, there is a distinction, I think it's easy for us to, to accept that, uh, that hypothesis, distinction between uh, a rationality when performed by individuals and performed by, 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 uh, by, by societies. And the, the, this, this, if you take this distinction as correct, this is the basis of a new semantics for particle system project, maybe uh, Possible translation semantics with a kind of all-purpose semantics. It is uh, 
he explains a, a, a sort of a complicated logic by translating it into simple logics and by composing this society of simple logics. Uh, if you do, if you do this, this, this correctly, we can give um, several different semantics, not only for particle system logics, not only for all the Costa logics and several other logics as well, uh, but we also can give this kind of semantics for many value of logic, for Lukashevich logic, for instance. We can, for example, explain three value or consistent, uh, sorry, three value of Lukashevich logic by means of a, an ensemble of two value agents. So, in a certain sense, if we compose, let's say, two value logics by value logics, we can give a meaning, a new meaning, to a three value logic, not only for Lukashevich, but for many other, uh, um, many value logics as well. But anyway, this is the semantic spirit of it. I will go uh, uh, more quickly in this point here because I want to, to go to a more important point in my talk. Uh, but the society semantics and, and this possible translation semantics are more or less to society semantics are a particular case of the possible translation semantics. They all start from this idea of decomposing a logic into minor simple logics, simple factors, and representing a logic as kind of a complicated, more or less complicated product of logic by means of the idea of translations. So the idea is very simple. It's F, it's F, if you have a complicated question, you ask anyone here, and then if everyone agree, I mean, is this correct? I don't know. I ask any one of you. If everyone agrees, I say it's correct. Okay, if I, if someone uh, disagrees, I can even say it's almost correct. I can give some sort of degrees of truth. So I can give, uh, uh, there are several applications to this idea. But these this semantics are, are as, I, as I say, they are all not only good for particle logic, but also for other logics. But they are, they are particularly, particularly useful to explain the LFIs. The LFIs are the logics of formal inconsistency. In those logics, we take this, this idea of a consistency and inconsistency as something primitive. And so, completely independent from contradictions. That's why I, 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 I made a question to Professor Ital Dottaviani yesterday. If in investigations, if in the course of her investigations, she had found any distinctions between any author claiming a distinction between uh, consistency and contradiction, she said she didn't. But Vasilyfi somehow, <coughs> at least in my understanding of it, somehow he sort of understands this distinction, maybe because he he just talks about contradictions and not about inconsistency. He talks about contradictions in our thinking, contradictions in our way of behaving rationally, rationally and so on. But he very seldom, I didn't find it, very seldom he mixes the idea of a contradiction and inconsistency. And this is very much in line with what I, I, this, this idea I'll be presenting here. So, the LFIs, I don't know if you can, ah, you can, you can see it in a, uh, well, if there was a point, it would be fine. But if you go to the first line, you see that, uh, ah, there is there's something wrong here. I'm sorry, this, this little ball must be missing here, it should be canceled. I wrote it by, by, by mistake. So, the idea is the following. From alpha and not the alpha, you do not get beta. But if you add it to me, if you add it to this contradiction, alpha not the alpha, the idea that the alpha is consistent, then you get explosion. Huh? Yeah, there's an extra alpha as well. Yeah, so two mistakes. Compensate each other. <laughs> 
Well, but the, anyway, uh, that's, that's the idea of it. So uh, contradictions are not explosive. But a contradiction related to something which is consistent, this really is explosive. So we then separate this, 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 uh, the two notions, contradictions and uh, consistency, or even inconsistent. So what does this little ball alpha mean? This ball alpha means alpha is safe or uncontroversial statement. It cannot support contradictions. So, how do we divide the world between a statements that are safe or uh, uncontroversial from those which are controversial? I do not know. This is a philosophical task. This is not a matter of logic. So if you if you accept that the world can be divided, it's our task as philosophers, as human beings, to decide which topics are to be considered safe, which topics are not to be considered safe. For, for instance, uh, if I say about numbers, odd number in contrast to big numbers, then the notion of odd number is, of course, uncontroversial. I have a recursive <coughs> definition of what odd number means, but I don't have any recursive definition or any precise definition of what a big number is. So the notion of big number is soft or unsafe or controversial, while odd number is safe, hard, or uncontroversial. So, for instance, this is just a week, an example. If I will reason about numbers, I have to know in which aspect I am reasoning. Okay, so this new semantics uh, is, uh, works in a certain way that negation can be can have more than one meaning. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's soft. So this this, this semantics of this possible translation of semantics distinguishes between uh, uses of negation. So the same negation, the same negation can have two meanings. Sometimes I say, well this is a big number, it's not a big number. My salary is good and it's not good. But I cannot say my my check is an odd number or an even number. I cannot say both, right? And also the notion of the primitive notion of inconsistency or consistence has also more than one meaning. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's soft. And translations are used to distinguish cases. So what do we gain from this perspective? Well, several things from my point of view. First of all, the logic of formal inconsistency that applies. They separate contradictoriness from inconsistency. And also they separate non-consistency from inconsistency. So in principle, they are not the same. <coughs> not consistent is not necessarily equal to inconsistent. They also separate non-inconsistent from consistent. Right? But they do not validate, well, that's something which some people make some mistakes, I'm not going to, to enter into detail. They do not validate contradictions, nor they invalidate the principle of non contradiction. The story about this is the principle of explosion. Okay, the idea is simple. It's like uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle uh, proposes in his uh, book, The Sign of Four, uh, talking to Watson. Say, what's up? Eliminate all of you from making an investigation. Eliminate all other factors. Start by taking everything as, as true in principle. They eliminate all other factors. Eliminate the ones which cause trouble, which are inconsistent, and which remains must be the truth. This is a kind of, a, as I see it, a kind of very consistent uh, advice to Watson. Okay, now just back to a, a little point here. Okay, if we separate everything from contradictions, consistence, inconsistence, non-consistent, etc., etc., how do we, and if, if, as we know, classical logic equates everything, in classical logic everything is the same, how can we go from this scenario to classical logic? Well, by simply adding axioms, which make you go 
slightly and slightly getting closer to classical logic. Okay? If, you, if you put some other principles, which does that principle show you, this ball principle, you have this scenario. By adding new properties on this ball operator, you are getting closer and closer to classical logic. So you may, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, okay, I mean, just what uh, logic is, I'm going to show you just a, a very simple uh, uh, LFI, the logical formal ecosystem. It starts with positive logic plus, well, it's just a subclassical logic, just a part of classical logic. No signal. Up to this point, there is no signal. I'm just dropping. I'm just dropping the law of explosion, some scopes from classical logic, and uh, uh, well, um, okay, anyway, uh, there's some action I'm missing. Yeah, plus this this action is uh, ball A is not there. Ball A A and not A implies this. Now, other people have already thought, not only me and my group. On taking the consistence of primitive, the philosopher Arthur Field argued that it would be possible to treat the notion of logical consistence as a primitive metalogical notion. So he, uh, some years ago, he gave this this this, this proposal. He proposed that we could go in this direction, uh, following some previous idea by ideas by Etchemendy and Prato. So what Field had in mind would be a notion which could not be reduced to semantic consistence or syntactic consistence. If I want the notion of consistence to be primitive, it cannot be reduced to semantic consistence, neither to syntactic consistence. But Field apparently, not, apparently, as I could see, he did not succeed in the, in the enterprise. There are some criticisms, especially by Christoph Wojtovicis, uh, Point in that field attempts really amounts to abbreviation for stating that about consistence of meta theoretical sentences. So, in a sense, in a, in, 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 in a few words, what field would be doing would be transferring the notion of consistency to model uh, to modal logic. Modal logic. So this, this notion will be modal. So again, if this notion is modal, it's logic again. So it's really nothing independent. There's, there's some but I think that the only way, so because of this failure, I think the, the only way you then go back and to start from scratch and to take a, a notion of consistent or inconsistent spirit. So this logic BC is adds to this seeming principle I just showed you some slides ago. Uh, this action BC1 by adding uh, ball A. A ball alpha, alpha, not alpha, and then uh, proposing as a rule that this trivializes the system. Okay, so if A, if alpha is consistent and contradictory, then it explodes. And here, contradiction is not the same as inconsistency. Uh, well, we have some several properties. Uh, we, we can regain several rules, several rules of pathology, but all of them. Some use the rules. Basically, what's interesting in fact, in fact in number two, which shows already how this logic relates contradiction and inconsistency. You see here, from alpha and not alpha, I do deduce not ball alpha, which means from a contradiction, I deduce no consistency. And remember, in the second line, from consistence, I did use non-contradiction, but I, in converse of those rules do not hold. If I want them to be to hold, I have to put them as a new rules on new actions. Now, some uh, forms of contraposition role hold the R I mean the C. So I can only have a contraposition if alpha is consistent. So but if if I if I drop it this this extra uh, hypothesis that alpha consists and I do understand contraposition in general. So what does this mean? I have several little things like that. This means that in order to recover classical laws, I have to know where where which point exactly I I, I should consider to be consistent. If I 
adding more and more uh, hypothesis about the system, then I will be getting closer and closer to classical logic. Actually, to be very frank, in a moment I'll show you, classical logic is this logic plus this following assumption. Everything is consistent. Then get classical logic. So a new, uh, another logic is the CI, which is a strong LFI. I just add to PC this new principle here. So this is uh, empty set, because I, I, I need colors, I usually use black ball, but I don't have black ball. So this empty set means inconsistent. So negation, not precisely inconsistent, but non-consistency. So if I add this principle now, non-consistency, uh, uh, non uh, non consistency implies contradiction, then I get still closer to classical logic, but I'm not there yet. Now, CI, in this logic in CI, inconsistent and contradiction are equivalent. Because I had before alpha and not alpha entails non consistent alpha. So I get just the contrary here. So in this logic, consistent contradictions are the same, but still I'm not in that classical logic. But what's missing here is that no contradiction does not imply consistency. Still have some things. Now, a very nice point here. It, it's, it, only consistency can be consistent. I can only prove. Only consistency or inconsistency formulas can themselves be provably be proven consistent in CI. That is. Bo alpha is the theorem of, of uh, CI if and only if alpha is of the form Bo beta or not Bo, uh, not, uh, not Bo beta species, to come from here, for some beta. What, what, what's the meaning of the little theorem? The little theorem is the following. I cannot prove consistence from nothing. I can only prove that consistent things, which philosophically I have decided before, to be consistent themselves. Logic does not decide to me what is consistent in the world and what's not. Another nice point is that CI, besides being a sub classical logic, can recover classical logic entirely. Why is that so? Because in CI, I can recover classical negation. If I define this tilde negation here as not alpha, and consistency alpha or alpha implies alpha and uh, this is new just defined notion of, of uh, negation here then classical logic can be simulated inside CI by means of this, this previous uh, conjunction this junction implication and this new negation so uh, CI is a subclassical logic but classical logic can be translated inside it and also inside the weaker decision. So this means that, this only means that those little logics are more cautious. They're cautious logic. They take more, they take things more um, caution than classical logic. They do not uh, explode just by having a contradiction. They, they are very careful. And if I want to reason with classical logic, I would have a way of accessing classical logic inside of it. So they are more powerful than classical logic. Now, uh, we can use this, this little, this little uh, sign, little ball, the sign of consistent, to recover uh, several part consistent logic. C1 of the Costa, for instance, is recovered by the following principle. If alpha is consistent and beta is consistent, so any combination is consistent. The logic is C1 plus, working by the cost of the bueno, can also be recovered just by joining the following principle. Not a conjunction, but a disjunction of it. If I, if it, oh, it's just, I'm sorry, I, I, I made a mistake, it should be ball alpha, not the alpha ball. Just, just the country. Uh, I'm sorry for those mistakes. And here as well. Uh, anyway, 
the idea is that if I if I take that with the following principle, alpha is consistent, or beta is consistent, it's sufficient to imply that any any uh, order connectives are consistent, then I have to see one plus one. This, the distinction is that I, I need conjunction in the first line and reject the second line. The logic, the three valid logic Q1 by Marisetti can be recovered just by saying that any complex formula is consistent. I mean, just uh, uh, atomic formula are not necessarily consistent, but uh, uh, more complicated formula, molecular formulas are consistent. Just by adding this, this little thing, I can have the logic. And many other logics can be recovered this way by increase of the purpose. The logic LFI1 is a variant of J3 logic, which uh, Professor Ital and Professor Da Costa have worked with years ago. This logic has been discovered several times by different names. Yeah, yeah I think the first historical reference is by Schutter, who discovered that logic before. And this logic is important because all other, uh, I mean, I show you in a moment, it's this part of secret logic by the costs are going to be explained by translating into this logic. Then I come back to this point and show you. Well, another L logic, the same logic, named LFI1 or J3, as we we're talking about it, like uh, Bate, Gotaviano, and also Schutte, can be uh, axiomatized just by taking the notion of inconsistent in, into account. So inconsistent of A, alpha and beta, equivalent to inconsistent alpha and beta, or inconsistent of beta and alpha, blah, 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 blah. If I add this, if I just take these three axioms by starting from the view of inconsistent, I can give a new, uh, nice axiomatization for this logic, and several others. P1 again. Ah, again. Okay. What's important here? Classical logic is just axiomatized by taking uh, both alpha forever alpha. So classical logic is just a particular case where everything is consistent. It's taken to be consistent. And we have just as a joke, he constructed out of 8,000 three value, three value logic by playing with this idea. But of course, they don't have any special Okay, the idea of translation then is like, uh, as I like to say, how much time I have? Because you're the time. 15 minutes, still have some. 10 minutes. So the idea of this semantics is we can have a uh, understanding like the Rosetta Stone. So the Rosetta Stone was a key, as you know, to understand the uh, hieroglyphic writing of the old. Egyptians, and it was only possible because there was an, an assumption. There was a, we found a stone, I think there was uh, Napoleon troops found a stone which had some parts of it in Greek, some part in Demotic, uh, and some part of it in, in hieroglyphic, and they made the funny assumption. What if the three parts are talking about the same thing? Starting from this assumption, they discovered or they proposed a, a meaning to the hieroglyphic uh, symbols, which proved to be consistent later on by other discoveries. But the idea is, was the following. So I had no, so this hieroglyphic writing works like a kind of a strand logic for me. If I don't know its meaning, I better ask it to Greek and to Demotic. And thinking that they are going to agree the same meaning. If they agree, then I have a meaning for the thing I did not know before. That's the idea of this semantic. Let me go to this, 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 this figure here, which I think shows uh, in, in a nice way what you're doing here. If I have a strange logic, then I just translate it into other logic, L1, L2, L3, L4. Usually, there are infinitely many of them. Let I get a kind of society of logics. And by asking to this little logic, the meaning of this trend logic, I can have, I can compose, I 
can give a compose, uh, can give a meaning to this, uh, semantical meaning to this so-called strange logic. Now, this, 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 this kind of strategy is really mathematically useful. We can give real completeness proof to several logics. Coming back for a moment, just for you to know what is a translation, perhaps you know, but a translation is, is a very precise mathematical thing. It's, it's the following idea. So, if gamma entails alpha in a large L, then gamma star entails alpha star in a new logic L line. So this, this kind of morphine, this kind of um, uh, function, if you like, or transformation, is a, a translation. So usually we just need one side of it. So if then, if you have, if you take here if and only if, we say that the translation is conservative. So our group in Campinas has made lots of work in this kind of stuff, translating one logic into another, so on and so on and so on. And this mathematical idea is what is important here in my in my in my semantics. So post translation structure is a real model with a bunch of new logics and a bunch of functions, a bunch of transformation. And with this new structure, I get a I can give a precise meaning to the old logics. And then again, so side cement is this a particular case more useful to to, um, to many valued logics. Okay, so this, uh, this. Ah, important point related to these matrices is uh, to the semantic defined. Uh, even if some logics like a BC, the linear logic I show you, BC, CI, da Costa logics, and most of the LFIs cannot be characterized by finite valid matrices. But, however, they can be characterized by non-truth functional evaluation in, and by possible translation semantics. So, the idea is very, is very nice in, in my, my view. You, you do not have a finite valued semantic for certain logics, but you have a, a composition of a three value semantic for it. A kind of infinite easy composition of the three valid logics give you a new sense to logic so we did not have a finite valid logic. In a sense, that's the most close we can get to a finite valid semantic to certain logic we do not have. Uh, just, uh, just to give you an example of what a possible translation is, for instance, if I have here this uh, double negation of uh, alpha translated, I will translate it as weak negation and strong negation, etc., etc. Making all possible combinations, I, I, I can have here uh, seven distinct different uh, translations. For it. So each of those little translations will be considered in a different revalued logic. Certain cases, they are the same logic, but could be different. And then I can have a meaning of a complication like a double negation, which is something hard to understand in paraconsistent logic sometimes, by translating it into simpler uh, logic. So I can have completeness. Uh, I work very well for the cost of logics, blah, blah, blah. This will just go to the main point here. So there is a close notion, which is the notion of a non-deterministic semantic, which has been working by uh, Arno Avron and uh, Idulev. They are also working with this kind of a semi, uh, kind of many valid logic, but non-deterministic in a sense. But we have proved, Marcel Cornelia and I, that these are just particular case of our possible translation. So, Possible translation might have something very, very powerful in a sense because they can, they can uh, even they can even have a particular case uh, non-deterministic translations by Avram and Levy. They also work for first-order logic. We can 
I also have this logic of formal ecosystems for first order logic. And here comes that part that where they can be applied to set theory. Now the idea is the following. By predicating on consistent, now if I go to first order logic, I can give a new a new regard or a new uh, way to see by consistent set theory has been already working by several people, including Da Costa, Arruda, I think the Australians have been working on it, Zach Weber, and uh, I think Silver, even Priest. Martins as well, yes. But we have a completely different way of making a part of system theory by starting from the point of view of consistency principle. Now, the idea uh, contradictions can be tolerated here, okay, this uh, point we philosophical point here. And the idea is that, I mean, the idea is, is that we, I'm not going to show the, this in the text for you, but we can uh, start from the following idea. It's, it's, perhaps it's better to understand the, uh, the, the intuition than the mathematical behind This intuition is that not only formulas can be consistent, but sets can be consistent or not. Okay? If I, if I axiomatize this here, the notion of C, for instance, read these two lines, please, C1 and C2. If I say Cx means x is a consistent set. So for every x, if x is a consistent set, then equality is a consistent formula. And C2. If equality is not consistent, if equality is not consistent, then the set is not consistent, for instance. So if we start from axioms like that, then we can have a, we can recover a, a we can actually define a new uh, part consistent uh, set theory. We call it ZFMBC because you are basing it on our first logic MBC. But you can prove several things here. Of course, of course, we cannot prove that this is consistent, of course. Because there would be a, an impossible problem as a name over around. But what we can do, what we can prove, is that this uh, new part consistent set theory is equi-consistent to the F. This is very, very nice. And also, more than that, we can show, we are preparing a paper on, on this subject, that some intuitions by Cantor, when Cantor talks about uh, uncompleted <coughs> sets, uh, understanding free height, uh, when he talks about this kind of thing, which is in his intuitions are things that were not very precisely defined, this kind of inconsistent sets in Cantor intuitions can be represented here in our set theory. They found it very nice. Very nice. Because perhaps that's that's our that's our point we'll be defending. Perhaps Cantor had in mind the possibility of working with no precise, no consistent collections and take them into account into mathematics. Why not? So if you if you go to the work of Euler, Euler did something which should be very strange for us today. In, in calculus and so on, and they have a, a nice, precise sense if you go to higher mathematics. And I, I, I this, the same intuition holds here, from the point of view of the work I'm doing with my colleague Marcel. So perhaps the, the point of some point of view of of of, of Cantor have been missing, have been destroyed by 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 Hubert and by Russell and by those people who try to give. And it sends you in another direction. What if we go back to Cantor and if you discover some new nice things to be thought about? So, and this leads, what I think, to the explosion of mathematical thinking. And a very nice sentence by, by Cantor, which I cannot find in the very finish. As we said, the mathematics is in the of high height. Of course, you know, the nicety or the way of mathematics. Um, leaves in its freedom. And if 
by no sinvergüenza.